if you're going to say, I'll do it later, or I'll do it tomorrow or Monday, you're in a program, yep. <laughs> right? Because you actually should be doing it in the moment, right? Right. So then I assert that if you're not in the present moment, you're running a program. And so the more, listen, paying attention is being present and it's a skill. And you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. And you know when they're not present with you because they're not paying attention with you to you. So then imagine you're going to create and you're not present. H how could you miss the moment of creation? You then are in the known. You're in the familiar uh, past or the predictable future. So that, 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 that sweet spot of the generous present moment, if you keep practicing overcoming your body, overcoming the conditions in your environment and overcoming that predictable future in the familiar past and you keep working for the present moment you are going to develop the habit of being present and if where you place your attention is where you place your energy and you're in the present moment you got a lot of energy to use you got a lot of energy to execute you got a lot of energy uh, to design a destiny with and i invite people to look back at their own life and look at the spontaneous moments where this has happened because i can gen i can literally attribute pretty much every single successful experience of my life every single great experience from a moment in which i created that idea, I had that inspired feeling. I had that feeling like, oh, this is gonna, ha oh, this is gonna be big, and that flood of emotion, and that confidence, and that, and that it would happen somewhat spontaneously and somewhat serendipitously, and then the result would be on it as a company, or the result would be my book, or the relationship, or something great that would happen. But I never really harnessed the control over it. I just utilized what kind of happened by happenstance. And maybe I would do a few things to put myself in the right place in the right time to make this happen a little bit more reliably. But no doubt that all of the good things that have happened have come from that formula. Now, if I can take control of that formula, oh shit. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I'll be the first person to say that we already know how to do this. Yeah. We, we, all, we are wired to be creators. We already know how to do it. You just you just made up your mind that it was more important than anything else. And 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 you have that vision, you have that possibility, and the moment you feel that emotion, you're connected to your future. And no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that future. And it's feeling connected to your future, feeling the inspiration, the joy, feeling the exuberance, the, the love for your future every day is going to, just like your body follows your mind to the coffee maker, to the toilet every morning, to the known, your body is going to follow your mind right into that future because that's where your attention and your energy is. So then, yeah, if it isn't happening in your life, then there's some emotion. There's some unconscious attitude or thought process, hardwired. There's some habituation of thought, behavior, or emotional reaction that's keeping you as you. So then if your personality creates your personal reality, and it does, and your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, then the present personality who's listening to this show has created the present personal reality called their life. So if you want to create a new personal reality, a new life, it means you're going to have to change your personality. <laughs> That means you're going to have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about in that 95% and change it. You're going to have to become conscious of your unconscious habits and behaviors, how you speak and modify them. And then you're going to have to look at those emotions that keep you connected to the past and decide, does this emotion belong in my future? And if it doesn't, leave it behind and the memory associated with it. So most people try to create a new personal reality has the same personality and it doesn't work we literally have to become someone else and the act of becoming is a function of overcoming so that means you got to light a match in a dark place and when you sit down and all of a sudden you hear those voices i can it's too hard i'll never change it's my ex's fault it's my boss's fault you know uh, i'm too this i'm too that i'm too old i'm too tired it's too late and those are the thoughts that are the boundary of the known and now you're stepping out into new territory and the body that's been conditioned to be the mind emotionally is saying, don't go, don't, don't leave the, uh, the known here. Stick with guilt. It's much better. Stick with suffering. At least you can predict it. And yet your conscious mind is wanting to go for a ride and your body's going, whoa. So, so then it may take a little time 
to help the body out of the past. It's, it's, it takes some time, right? Uh, so then the person can have a, a great meditation and feel really connected and then get up and then get frustrated on the freeway and judging everybody else. I mean, you just disconnected from the energy of your future and you're back to the energy of your past. Don't expect anything to change. And if you tell me it's because of that person or that circumstance, I'm going to say, oh, you're back to the unconscious program of being a victim in your life. And so there is a period a grace period of transformation where we have to cross this river from the old self to the new self. And that, that void, that unknown, is the neurological, the biological, the chemical, the hormonal, the genetic death of the old self. And, and the most people, the moment they step out, and the hardest part about change is making a new choice. The moment you make a new choice, get ready. You're leaving the known. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. You can't predict. You're not in the known any longer. And most people, you know, they step out and they hear that voice. It's too hard. You never change. And they believe in that thought. And that thought leads to the same choice, which leads to the same behavior, creates the same experience, produces the same emotion. And then they say, oh, this Aubrey feels right to me. No, that feels familiar. So, so then if you're becoming conscious of how you speak, you're sitting in your meditation and you're becoming aware of how you act that you complain and you blame and you make excuses you feel sorry for yourself you judge other people now you're conscious of what you were unconscious of that's a victory too because consciousness brings awareness and there's an energy that goes along with that and all of a sudden you're not in the program you're the consciousness observing the program you're outside the jar you're objectifying your subjective self you're seeing yourself through the eyes of someone else. And then when you look at those emotions and you say, my goodness, I, I didn't even know it was guilt. I just, I, it, I, this is how I always feel. I didn't even know it was guilt. Now I know. All right, well, now that you know, you can't not know. So then what are you going to do? You're going to live with the knowing that you're, you're a victim or you're guilty or you're suffering? No, the insight isn't going to do anything until you initiate some type of change. So then you say, I'm going to stop blaming, complaining, make excuses, feeling sorry for myself, judging other people. Now you're in the river and there's a tug for the brain and body to go back to the familiar past. And, and every day, if you just work on practicing and changing it, you will go from one state of being to another state of being. And you will begin to think differently. What thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? That's a good question. What behaviors do I want to demonstrate in one day the act of closing your eyes? As an athlete, you know this, and you begin to rehearse in your mind, mentally rehearse what you're about to do, begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you've already done it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past, it's now a map to the future, and if you keep hitting that hardware over and over again, the hardware is going to become a software program, and who knows? You just may start acting like a happy person. There's no magic there. And then here's the toughest part. The toughest part is, can I teach my body emotionally what that future feels like before it happens? Now, that sounds really easy, but when it comes down to feeling gratitude before the experience, most people go, uh, yeah, I gotta go. I'm, yeah, <laughs> didn't really feel it, you know. But the person who says, I'm not getting up, I'm just not going to get up until I open my heart to life. Now, to me, that's, that's a willingness. So then as they trade guilt and suffering for joy and freedom and, they, and inspiration and a love for life, and they're doing it without relying on anything outside of them, they're going to be more prone to no longer need anything outside of them to make them feel that way. They're going to feel that way naturally. And then everybody's going to be really suspicious like... <gasps> He changed his medication. Ooh, he's doing <laughs> something. He's not telling me. You know, you're going to show up unpredictable in your life. And that's when we begin to become outstanding or supernatural or extraordinary. But you can't take any of that with you to become someone else. And if someone says to me, well, I really can't do it because I've had this experience 22 years ago or 30 years ago. I'm going to say to you that event had such a strong emotion that you haven't changed <laughs> since that experience and forget about the experience just overcome the emotion because the memory without the emotional charge is called wisdom and that's why we're here so then you can look back at the past and you can say wow i learned something really great i'd never do that again and by the way when the f experience finally lands in your lap and you prove to yourself how powerful you really are that you created something by thought alone and that 
event comes in a way that you never expected, that surprises you and leaves no doubt that what you were doing inside of you produced an effect outside of you, and you are exuberant, and you feel worthy of life and feel grateful to be alive, that you are in love with the moment, 